Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. In early 2020, I created a series going over how to implement logging into a Firebase account using either email password or sign in with Apple. And that was using iOS 13. This is the first set of videos to address some bugs introduced in iOS 14, along with adding some new features and some new Apple requirements. In this, the first video of three, I'll fix some bugs and replace the UI kit representation of sign in with Apple with the native SwiftUI version. In the second video, which is optional, I'll show you how you can remove the dependency on CocoaPods for Firebase and migrate instead to Swift Package Manager. In the third video, we'll address the new requirement by Apple that if your app requires some kind of account creation, you must also provide the user with the ability to delete the account and all related data. Before I get started, let me request that if you enjoy this video, please leave a comment below and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. You can continue on from the last video in this series, video nine, if you completed the work, or you can start with the completed code and it's available from the link in the notes below. If you try to run the app from that link, however, it'll fail because I've not included the Google services info.plist file. For this, you'll need to log into your Firebase console and get the plist from your project. Now, if you don't have a project, well, we can create a new one. But first, return to the Xcode app and make sure that your bundle identifier's target is changed to your domain name and not my one or the sample one that's in the sample app and copy that bundle ID. Now you can return to the Firebase console and click on Add a New Project. Give it a name and click on Continue. Now once it's been provisioned, continue once more. Next, click on the iOS button to create a new app. Paste in your bundle ID to register the app. And now from here, you can download that Google services info.plist file and drag it into your project. Return to the console and go to the authentication item in the sidebar and tap get started. We're going to have to add both the email password and Apple as your sign-in providers like this. Next, go to the Firestore database tab and create the database. You can start in test mode, that's okay. We'll fix that in a second. And then enable. Once it has been enabled, access rules and change the rules as follows so that anyone can create an account, but only the account user can modify, that is delete their own account. This will also remove any time limitations. So we'll match on users by user ID. We'll allow create and we'll allow read write only if the request.auth.uid is equal to the user ID. And then publish your app. We can return now to Xcode and your app should now launch without any errors. Now there's an immediate bug that you'll see if you try to sign up a new user. If you tap on the sign up button, the request a password reset screen is immediately displayed instead. If you dismiss this and return on forgot password, we'll see that same screen, but dismiss it and then tap the sign up button once more. The correct screen appears. So let's continue now and create a new account I'll just use one of my other email addresses 
and I'll enter a password that complies. Now, before you can run on your device, make sure that you go to the Signing and Capabilities tab and select your account. Now run on your device. This time, tap on Continue with Apple. And for me, I can authenticate with face recognition. I'm going to choose to hide my email. Now, once you've done it on both, return to your Firebase console, and you'll see that you now have two authentications, one for this Createc51 account, that's an email password, and one for this cryptic address, that's an Apple sign-in. If we move on to the database, I see that I have two user documents now created. Now, return to Xcode once more, and let's change our deployment target. The first thing I want to do is to change the target deployment from 13.4 to a minimum of iOS 14. And so I'll choose iOS 14.5. And I'll make sure that we change it in the project as well. Now, before we fix that sign up button, I want to fix two or three other little things. You'll notice that for two of the views, the preview is not being displayed. Now, I don't know why I missed this, but in every view that you have an environment object of user info, you also need to add it to the preview. So let's do that. The first one here is in content view. And the second one is in home view. Now there are some other things that could be updated here for Swift code in iOS 14. That's been soft appreciated, but I'll leave that up to you to fix as they are currently non-breaking and work just fine. For example, here in home view, the navigation bar title could just be changed to navigation title. And we could also replace the navigation bar items with the new toolbar items but these are changing even more in iOS 15, so I'm going to leave it like this for now. And there's one more typo to correct, and that's in Forgot Password View. In the alert, I see that the alerts message text says REET instead of RESET. Okay, now on to fixing that sign up bug. This is in Login View, when we try to present the sheet. I reported this bug to Apple and I finally got a response. Now I seldom use the is presented option to present sheets anymore because of this bug. However, the problem arises because I'm branching based on an action which is outside the closure. And we modify this in either the sign up view or the forgot password view. The solution is to capture this value in brackets like this and then remove self from the body. If I run this one more time, and this time when I tap on the sign up button, it works as expected. If I tap the forgot password button, it displays properly too. But we're not done yet though. Prior to iOS 14, in order to display the sign in with Apple button, we had to use a UI view representable to display the UI kit version of the button, as there is no native Swift UI version. This was added in iOS 14, so let's take advantage of that and replace our view. We can reuse most of the code, so it's not going to be a lot of work. We want to follow the same format as before, so we'll create a view where we can create our button and its functionality. So create a new SwiftUI view and name it Sign In with Apple Button View. We'll need to import authentication services. And I'm going to open the library and search for sign in with Apple button. And I'll drag it into the body and delete that hello world text view. I'm going to add a frame to the button 
of a width of 200 and a height of 50. I'm also going to change the sign in with Apple button style to a white outline. Now this is almost the same as before, but in our example it said continue with Apple. So in order to facilitate this, we'll need to add another argument to our sign in with Apple, and that is simply by adding dot continue. Notice that as soon as we started that period, we saw that there are continue, sign in, and sign up. Continue is what we want. Now all of the functions that we need were created in an earlier video in the series, and these are all stored in files in the auth folder, and in particular the fv auth file, where we have a number of functions related to authentication, not only for email, but also for sign in with Apple. There's the SHA-256 for encrypting our nonce string, along with one for creating a random nonce, and we'll make use of these too. So when we make our request, we'll need a nonce, which is an ID token. This is a cryptographic string that is used for authentication, and we'll need both of these functions then. Now returning to sign in with Apple button view, we can create our nonce string so that we can generate a random one using our fbauth function. So let nonce equals fbauth dot random nonce string. Now we'll need to store this and update it if it changes, so we'll need a state property for our view that we can assign this nonce to. So we create an optional state property called current nonce. We can now assign that nonce that we generated to the current nonce. We'll follow this by specifying what contact information we want to have requested from the user during authentication. And this is the request scopes for the request. And we'll specify full name and email in an array. And for the final part of the onRequest handler, we'll set the request nonce to the SHA-256 representation of our nonce string. And again, we'll use that fbauth function that handles that for us. What we've done is just handle the didTap function that was in our sign in with Apple view. For the onCompletion part, we can switch on result. And for the success case, we'll call the argument auth result and for failure error. And if there is one, we'll just print out the localized description to the console. Within the success case, we can perform another switch on auth result dot credential property. And in this case, all we want to check for is the Apple ID credential. So we can just say case lit Apple ID credential as AS authorization Apple ID credential, and then just have a break for all other cases in the default. Within that first case, then, is exactly what we have in our sign in with Apple's views authorization controllers did complete with authorization function. So let me just copy that. And I'll paste that into our case body. With that in place now, we can return to the login view and delete that call to the sign in with Apple view and replace it with our sign in with Apple button view. But we don't need the frame because we've set that in our view. Let's test this on a real device now and see if we can connect. I see that we're still signed in with Apple from the last session, so let me log out. I'll tap the Continue with Apple button once more, and I can authenticate with Face ID, and I have a successful login. Well, this is looking great. So we can return to Xcode and delete our past dependency on UIKit, which is that signed in with Apple view. Now this completes the video and our Firebase login app is up to date right now. 
However, there's one more thing that I personally want to do, and that is to replace my dependency on the third-party Copopods framework for Firebase and replace it with the Swift Manager equivalent. So I'm putting that in a separate video, and the link is in the notes below. Now you can skip that video if you like and go directly to the final video in this update series of 2021. And that's where we're going to allow the user to delete his or her account and all related data if they choose. This is a new requirement for Apple, so it's something that we're all going to have to do.